Cryptocurrencies have become widely popular in recent years, with some being a potential replacement for technologies and currencies, and others just being plain scam or hype coins. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own cryptocurrency token and actually be able to trade it with others. If you'd like to learn more about blockchain and how cryptocurrency works, check out these two fantastic videos in the description below. So let's begin. Here's the general process for creating a token. First, we will create a wallet to store our tokens in, then we'll code and customize the token, followed by pushing it to the test network, and then finally pushing it to the main Ethereum network. Additionally, if you want to take this project further, I will also mention some things at the end that you can add to your token if you wish. First, we're going to come up with four values for our token. The first one is the name, such as Bitcoin or Dogecoin. The second one is the symbol, such as BTC or DOGE. The third is the total supply of the token, such as 1 million tokens. And the fourth is the decimal places. The decimal places indicates how many pieces each token can be broken into. For example, if you choose two decimal places, each token will be divisible into 100 pieces. If you choose zero decimal places, each token is not divisible and you will only have the total supply. You can choose anywhere from zero to 18 decimal places. Make sure to write all four of these values down as we'll need them later in the video. Now you will need to have one of these four browsers. Chrome, Firefox, Brave, or Microsoft Edge. If you do have one of those, install MetaMask from the link in the description below. MetaMask will allow us to create our own wallet, which we want to do, and also allow us to use various different networks. Once you've got it installed, open it and create your wallet. Make sure that you store your private key somewhere safe. Now, in order to deploy your token to the Ethereum network, we'll have to use some Ethereum. First, we'll start off by using a test network in which we can use some fake Ethereum. And then if you wish, you can push it to the main Ethereum network, which will cost real Ethereum. The good thing about these test networks is that you can obtain free fake Ethereum, which means that you can deploy your token onto the test server for free. So first, let's change our network to the Robston test network. Next, we can add some Ethereum to our account. Click your Ethereum address at the top to copy it and go to the Robston faucet from the link in the description below. This allows us to add Ethereum to our test network wallet. It will take some time to add to our wallet, so for now we can begin working on coding the token. For coding the token, you have two options. The first option, if you just want to get it up and running, is to copy the code from the link in the description below. If you're more interested in the technical aspect of it, you might want to go with option two, in which I will actually go through the process of coding the token with you. Please note that the second option will require a little bit of object-oriented programming, so just a heads up in case you're wondering on which one you should choose. The first step for both options is roughly the same. Head to remix.ethereum.org, which is the website that we'll be using to code our token. Under File Explorer, click on Contracts and open Storage.Sol. Now, if you're choosing to go with option one, delete everything inside this document and copy and paste the code from the link in the description below. Keep watching this video. If you're deciding to go with option two, delete everything inside this document and skip to this timestamp. We'll be coding everything from scratch. Okay, if you're choosing to go with the copy and paste method, we really only have to change four values that we talked about at the start of the video. Scroll down until you see the name, symbol, decimals, and total supply, and change the four values to the values you wrote down earlier. Since I'm just demonstrating, I will name my token, my token, change the symbol to ASDF, set the decimals to zero, and set the total supply to a million. Once you're done with this, you can move on to this timestamp or keep watching this video for a more technical explanation of the code. The programming language that we'll be using for this video is called Solidity. If you want to read the full documentation for Solidity, I will leave it in the description below. Before we start coding, we need to declare the version of Solidity that we are using. In this case, we are using version 0.6.0, which we can declare by typing pragma solidity 0.6.0. Next, we'll code an interface for our token. If you don't know what an interface is, it's basically a blueprint for a class. Unlike inheritance, an interface only states the functions, but does not actually implement them. Since our interface is for an ERC20 token, we'll name it ERC20 token. Make sure that there are no spaces. Now we need to declare our functions. We're going to need a total of six functions a total supply function that returns the total supply of our token, a balance of function that returns the balance of a specified address, an allowance function that allows an address to allocate a certain part of their funds to another address, a transfer function that allows us to transfer tokens from one address to another, 
an approve function to set the allowance the spender is allowed to transfer from the original owner, and a transfer from function to move the tokens from the sender to the recipient. Finally, we'll need two event functions. Events store data pass in transactions and we'll have two events, a transfer event and an approval event. This is what would make the blockchain possible. Transactions get logged by the events and then get added to the block to be mined. Now that we have our interface coded, it's time to start working on our contract. Contracts are programs that run on a blockchain, and in our case, it will run on the Ethereum blockchain. Similar to other object-oriented programming languages, we can create a contract and implement our interface that we just made. I'm going to call the contract my token, but ideally you should call it what you're going to name your token. Next, we need to create four different variables, the token name, token symbol, the token decimals, and the total supply. Since the token name, token symbol, and token decimal values are all immutable values that we do not want to change, we need to add the constant identifier to each variable. Lastly, we can add the total supply of tokens, which can actually be changed through the burning and minting of tokens. Set each of the four values to the values that you wrote down earlier in the video. The reason that we add a u in front of int8 or int256 is because we want to use an unsigned integer as opposed to a signed integer. Normally, a regular 8-bit integer or a signed integer can represent 256 numbers ranging from negative 128 to positive 127. However, an unsigned integer can represent 256 numbers, but only positive ones ranging from zero to 255. The maximum value for an 8-bit integer is 11111111, which is 255. This is why you'll see 8-bit RGB values go from zero to 255. And since we don't need negative numbers for our token supply or the token decimals, we'll use unsigned integers. Next, we need to implement the two events from our interface. Here, we'll make a few changes. Change both uint values to tokens and change owner to token owner. Make sure you follow standard naming protocol and have the first word lowercase and the second word capitalized. Now we're going to create a mapping. This will link an account address to a balance because currently a token address is just the combination of letters and numbers and nothing else. We're also going to add this second line, which will allow us to assign balances with other accounts, which helps provide functionality to our allowance function. Then we'll need to add the library SafeMath. SafeMath is Solidity's math library that adds overflow checks. For example, if we want to store the integer 256 into an 8-bit unsigned integer, it will automatically overflow and reset the integer back to zero. Now we'll begin coding our functions. The first one we want to create is a constructor which will add the entire supply of our token to the source wallet. 
We'll then import that source wallet into MetaMask later, which gives us the entire supply of the token. Message.sender refers to the current object calling the function. This could be a human being requesting to transfer tokens, or a contract calling another contract. Next, we need to add the six functions from our implemented interface. We'll start with the three getter functions, the total supply function, which will return the total supply of our token, the balance of function, which will return the balance of a specified address, and the allowance function, which will return the allowance of a delegate to the owner's wallet. Of course, we do need another way to transfer the tokens from one wallet to another. We can do this by adding a transfer function. Now we do want to have it return a boolean because we want to know whether or not the transfer went through successfully. First, we want to check if the number of tokens being requested to transfer is less than or equal to the number of tokens inside the sender's wallet. If it's true, we want to subtract the number of tokens from the sender's address and add the tokens to the receiver's address. Then we want to emit the transfer event. This will log all the data being passed through and create a transaction to be added to the blockchain. And finally, we want to return true. The last two functions are going to be for the allowance system. The allowance system in Solidity is mainly there for the purpose of buying things from contracts. Since contracts cannot listen for events, events cannot trigger when they receive tokens. Thus we can split the payment into two systems, an approve function which has the user approve the payment to the contract by setting an allowance, and a transfer from function which will deduct the tokens from the owner's address and add the tokens to the delegate's address. Starting with approve, we want to set the allowance of the delegate from the caller's wallet to the number of the tokens specified. Then we want to emit the approval event and return true.
lastly, for a transfer from, it's a little more complicated. Firstly, we need to check if the number of tokens being requested to withdraw from the allowance pool is smaller than the number of tokens the owner has, then check if the amount being requested to withdraw is smaller than the allowance allocated to the recipient. Then we subtract the number of tokens requested from the owner's balance, and we also need to subtract the number of tokens requested to the recipient's allowance. Then we add the tokens to the recipient's account, emit the transfer event, and return true. Finally, we have two safe math functions, which you can type out as you see on screen here or copy it from the pre-made document. We just need two functions, add and subtract, which are not too complicated and are easy to implement. And that's it, we've coded our token. The next step for publishing our token is to compile it and then deploy it. To compile it, click on the double hexagons on the left and change the compiler version to 0.6.0. Make sure your settings are the same as mine, and then compile it. Afterwards, click on the Ethereum logo on the left, and change the environment to Injected Web 3. This will prompt MetaMask to load up, and it will automatically input the account. Make sure the settings are the same as mine, and then deploy it. MetaMask will pop up, and make sure that you confirm the transaction. Just a reminder that you should be on the Robston test network and you should have one Ethereum available to test the contract. Next, we want to give ourselves the entire supply of the token. Open the transaction that you just approved through MetaMask and open the Etherscan link. This gives us a rundown of the information of the transaction. Copy the address in the to field and then add the token to MetaMask. We're now done with the test token. Assuming that everything went smoothly with your test token, you can choose to stop here, or you can choose to publish your token onto the main Ethereum network by changing your network to the main Ethereum network in MetaMask and following the same steps as the test token. Of course, this is just the beginning. You can add cool functionality to your token, such as minting and burning, and you can even go so far as to promote your token to investors. But please remember, don't scam anyone with your token.